Hello everyone, welcome to Switch Up. We've got another review for you today, this time of Rise of the Third Power for us by Asdin over at Grinning Wolf Games. Please do give his channel a look, perhaps subscribe. Link to it is in the top pinned comment. Possibly one of the greatest things to come from the 16-bit era of gaming was the incredible selection of role-playing games and the people that grew up playing them who now create their own. Many great titles today pay homage to the classics, but few seemingly manage to quite capture their essence. Does this game rise to the top or does it deserve third place? Well, thank you to the publishing team for the review code and now let's find out. Twenty years ago, the greatest war in human history rocked the three kingdoms of Rin and their allies. As the world lay broken, blame was laid at the feet of Arcadia, and subsequently the government collapsed. From the ashes arose Emperor Noroskov, who seeks to restore the former glory of Arcadia at any cost. The game begins with two of our protagonists sneaking into the castle on a mission to kidnap the princess and foil the secret plans of the Arcadian Emperor. I found the story very engrossing, partly due to the chemistry between Rowan, the drunken former pirate, and his partner in crime, the mercenary coroner. There is a lot of back and forth between them whilst carrying out the many quests, and the story is full of humour, drama, and political treachery. At its core, Rise of the Third Power is a top-down role-playing game with turn-based battle mechanics. There will be a lot of narration from the characters as well as many side quests that reward your party with a myriad of loot. It reminded me of the old Super Nintendo games of the same genre, particularly Chrono Trigger and the Final Fantasy games. There are four difficulties to choose from, with each one giving the player better rewards. There is even a story difficulty that allows players to auto-win non-story battles within seconds, just alleviating the grind for those that begin to find this tedious while still allowing them to enjoy the story. This is optional though, and I found it useful to speed through the game at certain points when just trying to get from point A to point B. You will walk around the many locations in the world map and enter cities, villages and caves where a number of monsters will lurk. Luckily all enemies appear on screen meaning that if you wish to press on and avoid confrontation you can. When engaging in battle they play out in a turn based manner and each character feels truly unique. Some actions require you to use your MP similar to many other games of this ilk and battles are fun with each character boasting many moves some of which are unlocked after leveling up. There is also the combo meter that allows certain characters to carry out an action together when it is full. This adds an extra layer of strategy as some combinations carried out an offensive move whereas others focus more on defense. Using these at the right times could turn the tide of battle. Every victory grants the party with money and experience points with the odd dropped item here and there. Where this game differs however is how the whole party levels up as a unit so there is no need to juggle experience points between multiple party members. Each level up will grant the party talent points which are then shared across the entire party. As each character is different each talent will unlock specific passive bonuses such as being able to get 20% extra coins per victorious battle for example. The game hosts a number of relics which can either be found or gained after completing a side quest and these will bless each character with a stat increase such as 3 points to their vitality. There is a crafting system which allows you to craft weapons and armour and this can be done at any time anywhere as long as you have all of the crafting components you need. And finally accessories can be found that characters can equip and these level up after many battles increasing their stats and bonuses. They encourage you to experiment with the items you equip to see what sort of benefits they may ultimately bring. Within towns you will find inns where your party can rest and an interesting feature is the type of buffs that can be purchased here which come in the form of better beds, food and drink. If you have the coins it might be worth paying for all of these as these buffs then last for a few battles. Resting at these inns also respawns all of the defeated enemies on the overworld map. In terms of controls, they are tight and kept simple and accessible, which seems to be the theme of the user experience as a whole. The developers have also given players the choice to move your character with either the left stick, the D-pad, or even the right stick, should you wish. At its very core, the experience really does resemble everything fans love about the games of old, although with a number of quality of life elements to help streamline the experience, as mentioned earlier, the whole party leveling up, or the relics which can be used for stat increases. Although it may seem as if they were trying to create a simplified baby's first RPG for want of a better phrase, this isn't really the case. 
these mechanics have given me the time to enjoy the greatly written narrative instead of having to decide who to prioritize for a level up or a skill gain. Fans of the genre though that like or more to the point need this level of micromanagement in their games will need to consider this before a potential purchase. Gameplay is fun and reminiscent of RPGs of the 90s, albeit in a streamlined manner. Purists may find some mechanics feel watered down as a result, especially those who enjoy creating specific character builds, although even this can be tweaked via upgrading the talent trees and through accessories, and those that enjoy the grind can still participate in this. It scores 18 out of 20. Controls are simple and responsive, doing the job as well as needed, and they score 17 out of 20. In terms of the visuals, as you would have seen, a pixel art style has been adopted and it really does look quite beautiful. The sprites capture the 16-bit era perfectly whilst capitalising on three decades of technological advancements to improve the fluidity of the animation. This is especially true in battle scenarios, where our characters appear more fleshed out and lifelike, carrying out attacks that spill great elemental animations. The enemy designs are good, but the animation here isn't quite on par with that of our heroes. Whereas heroes will throw themselves at the opposition, the enemy will just jolt in place, giving a sense that you are almost fighting a cardboard cutout. I understand it would have been a laborious task to animate every single enemy, not to mention a costly one no doubt, but the stark contrast between the two, heroes and enemies, when side to side in battle does make for a very awkward juxtaposition. The HUD and text size are legible enough, with a colorblind setting also available as well as pixel perfect resolution when playing in docs mode. The main protagonists have an ever-changing illustration on top of their text box, although I was not too keen on the style, it is at least a unique attempt at evoking a visual cue that would accompany the text rather than using the cliché anime tropes. The soundtrack has just a few songs, but those rustic acoustic melodies will get stuck in your head for quite a while. I really enjoyed the different boss battle songs as well as the peaceful music found when entering a town. The sound effects are decent, especially the cocking of guns before firing, which was a nice touch. Visuals create a nostalgic vibe to that classic 16-bit era, although not all animations are as smooth as they could have been, and they score 16 out of 20. Audio suits the gameplay situation well and is pleasant to listen to, and it also scores 16 out of 20. Rise of the Third Power costs £17.99 and regional equivalents are on your screen now. There is a fair amount of content for this price in terms of the story, but also via side quests and of course those items that you can try to collect. In terms of production values, whilst the pixel art certainly looks pleasant, it does feel slightly rough around the edges at times, but considering how invested I became in the story and the gaming mechanics, I feel that on the whole the package is of a good standard. Personally, I would have been happier had it been priced around the £15 mark, but the price that they've gone for is not too far from this to be fair. I do feel that a demo though would have been a good inclusion, but nonetheless, value scores 17 out of 20. To conclude, the development team are clearly fans of these types of games and it definitely shows. They have managed to create a deep narrative with fleshed out characters that will keep players immersed in the world of Rin and its geopolitical setting. I think that's the most endearing aspect of the game for me. There were no true heroes or villains here, only humans trying to survive in a world that is recovering from the worst war in its history, and in this respect it's the closest to a 16-bit RPG that I have genuinely enjoyed since games like Chrono Trigger or Terranigma. Purists may be left a little disappointed with some of the quality of life features and mechanics mentioned before, but I'm happy that the developers dared to break away from these conventions and didn't feel restricted by the rules of the genre. Personally, I believe it's paid off, making an accessible RPG for those who lived through the 16-bit era but haven't got the time these days to invest in a 70-hour extravaganza. This is truly a love letter to old-school gaming that has reminded me why these style of games were so great in the first place. Rise of the Third Power gets a switch up score of 84%. Thank you everybody for watching this review, I hope you enjoyed it. Please do remember to leave a like if you did. A big thank you to Asdin of Green and Wolf Games for writing this one for us. Please do check out his channel, have a look at some of his content, perhaps subscribe, that would be great. Link, as I said, is in the top pinned comment. A quick thank you to our Patreons as always for your continued support and to each and every one of you for watching our videos. Take care and until next time, happy gaming.